So my shirt for today is like the weather here in Jersey. You can't make up its mind if it wants to be chilly or warm. So we just, we blended it. Hey everyone, Renee here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I am super excited for this video, even though my wallet is extremely disappointed in me, but it's okay because I am here with another book haul. So I did a book haul fairly recently, I feel like. I feel like it is was just over a month ago I did a book haul, but we're back. I have accumulated another 20 plus books since my last book haul. I think there's exactly 24 here. Um, and if you didn't catch my last book haul, I will leave that link down below as well so you can check that out for the first half because I am now starting to build my own personal library at home. So these two shelves are pretty much the only two shelves that I have. They are small. They look a little bare right now because a lot of the books um, are currently on the floor <laughs> to be shown to you. So this is going to be part two of my library series. Uh, maybe it won't be a series. Maybe it will. Um, so welcome to my second book haul. Uh, welcome to the second part of filling my shelves and welcome to um, my wallet uh, crying. So once again, like everything in my life, I don't necessarily have an order or a system to this. Um, so we're just gonna get right into it and I'm just gonna start with this pile. Which actually, as I just said that I don't really have a system, Mm, a lot of the books in this pile are more of a thriller, so it, it, it is what it is. So starting out, we have The Project by Courtney Summers. This was one of my most anticipated releases. This came out in February. I have not read it yet. I know. Disappointed too. But this is essentially a thriller and it does have a very cult-like atmosphere and I have mentioned this book quite a few times, so I am not going to go too deep into the synopsis again. But it follows our main character, Lo, who just lost her parents in an accident and her sister has left her for this Unity Project and the Unity Project is the cult-like figure in this book and Lo is trying to get to the bottom of what um, the people of this project are all about. Um, and it just sounds so up my alley. It sounds like a movie that I would watch. Honestly, it sounds like a movie I have watched, either that or an episode of Criminal Minds and regardless. I'm about it. Next up we have Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson and the beautiful cover that it is. This is a book that from what I know was inspired by the events of R. Kelly and it follows our main character Enchanted who is an aspiring singer who gets picked up by this really popular music producer and it kind of goes from there and there's a lot of trigger warnings for grooming, pedophilia, assault, stuff like that. It touches on racism going on and what she's dealt with in her life and it just sounds like such a powerful read. I am three chapters into it currently and it is so good. I can't wait to continue with this book because I just feel like this is really going to be a five star for me. I hope it is. I hope. Then we have There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins. I actually don't know too too much about this book but I do know that Stephanie Perkins has another thriller coming out this year that I am very excited for because it has to do with the woods and that just sounds awesome. So. This one I heard a lot about when it first came out. Everyone was reading it and I just heard so many mixed opinions on it, but I really wanted to read it and kind of get a feel for her thriller writing before I delve into her new book. Even though they're not connected, I just want to. So I picked this up and I'm hoping to get to it soon and hopefully it's good. That's all. I mean, I hope all of these books are good. I don't buy a book to be disappointed in a book, but let's be honest, it happens. Then next up is a book that I am so, so excited to have, and that is The Girls Are Also Nicer by Lori Elizabeth Flynn. This was another book on my most anticipated releases list, and this follows two best friends who go to their 10-year school reunion, and they find out that someone is out to get them for something that they did in the past. And from what I also know, it does kind of rotate between timelines versus when they're older and when they're younger and in school, and there's just so much going on, and there's just this big mystery of who it is. And it's called The Girls Are Also Nice, but from what I know, obviously, the girls are not nice. And I'm just really excited to see where this goes. I'm really excited to see how it's written with the alternating timelines and see the mystery and how um, that goes. So we will see. I'm definitely getting to this book this month. 
Um, this might actually be the next one I pick up once I finish Crone and From Blood and Ash because I'm currently reading those two. Uh, so I'm anticipating this one very soon. Um, also, I'm not really too sure how I feel about the cover. It's got this like, uh, uh, this like gritty feeling and I, I don't like that, um, but I'll accept it. Next up, we're just gonna get into my paperbacks because why not? So first up, we have From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armantrout. This is my current read, which you can see J-Hope from BTS sticking out. And then again, um, I am not that far. I'm a little over 100 pages in, but I am adoring this book so far. This book, everyone talks about, everybody raves about, and I was so late to the party, but now that I'm here, I'm really happy to be here because this is just so good so far. I really hope it continues on this. Like every single chapter ends leaving you wanting more. And that's kind of bad because the chapters are kind of long, in my opinion. I'm not the biggest fan of long chapters, especially when I'm trying to go to bed. I, I'm always like, well, let me just get a chapter in before bed. But their chapters are so long and then they hit you with something and you're like, well, I can't go to bed yet. So then it's been keeping me up a little bit longer than I'd like, but in the best way. So I'm super excited to continue with this and hopefully add more of the series to my shelves because I know the third one is coming out soon. And you better believe I'm going to get the second one as soon as I finish this one. Sorry, wallet. <sighs> then we have Credence by Penelope Douglas. This is a romance book and this is a, from what I know, a spicy one. Like, spicy, so people say. Um, I don't even really know too much about it other than the fact that our main character goes to live with her um, stepfather's uncle, cousin, brother, no, her uncle. <laughs> goes to live with her step <laughs> goes to live with her stepfather's brother and his two sons and they're in the mountains and some stuff happens and there's romantic things going on and it just sounds interesting it's it sounds alluring like just the cover enough is like this mysterious vibe that's like what's gonna happen but it's just a romance but it looks like it might be like some murder in the woods, which would be cool, but I don't think that's gonna happen. Um, yeah, see. It just says one of them has her, the other one wants her, but he, he is going to keep her. And that just seems really intriguing enough. So we'll see. I don't know when I'm gonna get to this one. I told myself I was gonna do it in March. Will I actually listen to my TBR? To be decided. Next up, we have The Risk by L. Kennedy. This is the second book in the Briar U series. I just started this series um, because I always hear about L. Kennedy, specifically the off-campus series, but I decided to kind of stray from that and do Briar U. Um, and I'm super excited to read this. I also have um, The Chase by L. Kennedy, which is the first book in the Briar U series. And I did read this one and it was okay. It wasn't bad. It wasn't amazing. It was okay. But... This one was actually the whole reason why I got the series is because I liked how this one sounded. So I'm hoping that this one delivers a little bit more than this one or a lot more than this one. Um, but honestly, it, it sounds kind of corny, but it's your typical like bad girl romance book. <laughs> but I don't know. There's just something alluring about it. It's L. Kennedy. Why not? You know, why not just why not? And then if I like the risk, maybe I'll get the other two because this is a series of four. So We'll see. Next up, we have Verity by Colleen Hoover. This is another book that I have recently read and I did really like it. It is very interesting. This is a romance thriller about um, a struggling writer who gets hired by this really popular writer's husband to finish the series that his wife started because she gets really ill and the things that she discovers while living in their house and trying to finish her work is, um, is kind of odd and kind of disturbing to our main character and it just starts this whole mystery of like what's going on what's wrong with her you know and it was very interesting i i thought the ending was a little lackluster but other than that it was very good it was pretty spicy um but overall i thought that the plot was enough to kind of carry it for me and i was intrigued by it this was my first colleen hoover book and I am definitely excited to continue reading Miss Hoover's works, which is why I also 
picked up Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. This will be my second one. Um, I'm not quite sure why I gravitated towards this one versus some of her other books because as I've said before, when it comes to Colleen Hoover, I feel like there's not one of her books that I hear about more so than the other. I feel like it's just, they're all talked about. So I kind of picked this one up. This one seems a more, um, more like maybe damaged goods. If I can explain that and I kind of like that it's like not quite toxic but not sweet but who knows this might be toxic I don't know it just says hearts get infiltrated promises get broken rules get shattered love gets ugly and then the top of the synopsis says it's not exactly love at first sight for Tate Collins when she meets the tormented and secretive Miles Archer damaged goods we'd love to see it they wouldn't even go as far as to consider themselves friends. The only thing Tate and Miles have in common is a mutual physical attraction that can't be denied. Once their desires are out in the open, they realize they might have stumbled on the perfect no strings arrangement. He isn't looking for love and she doesn't have time for it. So the rest is up to imagination. Then my last paperback is my most disappointing paperback. <laughs> and that is because it is Opposition by Jennifer L. Armitrout. Now, this was an accident. An accident because I was uneducated. And this was no one's fault but my own. So I started reading from Blood and Ash. I'm loving it. I decided I want to read more books by Jennifer L. Armitrout. So I was at my favorite, Second and Charles, just browsing through the tall shelves of books. And I saw this one. And the only thing I saw was Lux. And I was like, oh, this is that, this is that series that everyone loves. Like, I want to, I want to know, I want to pick it up. I want to read it. So, um, it was like $4 from Second and Charles. So I was, didn't even think about it when I picked it up. And then I got home and I saw that it said opposition under it. And that's when it clicked in my head that Lux was the name of the series. And I don't know why, for some reason, I genuinely thought Lux was the name of the first book. So imagine how dumb I felt when I realized that this is actually the fifth book. I randomly picked up a fifth, a fifth book in a series that I've never even started. And I, uh, I don't know, Renee, you know, I'm disappointed in myself, but also not surprised because that's very on brand for me. Um, but at least I have this book now. So maybe it's a motivation to pick up the other books in the series. Um, so maybe that will be... To come. Moving on, we actually have one of my newest books. This actually just came in the mail before I started filming, and that is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. I heard so much about this book, but I also didn't because I feel like I didn't give it a fair shot when people talked about it. I kind of like almost tuned it out. Like I just knew that people liked it, but like I wasn't fully paying attention to this book until recently my friend Joanna from Currently Joanna, whose channel I will link below, um, read this book and she loved it and that's when I was like you know what let me actually look into this book so I finally looked at the Goodreads page read the synopsis and this book sounds like everything everything and I hope that it is I love books about life and from what I know this book has so many metaphors and quotes about life and just discovering yourself and honestly, I feel like I'm going through a quarter life crisis, quite literally a quarter life crisis. Um, so I feel like this is a really good time for me to read this book and I still really don't know much else about it, but it says a dazzling novel about all the choices that go into a life well lived between life and death. There is a library up until now, Nora Seed's life has been full of misery and regret. She feels she has let everyone down, including herself, but things are about to change. When she finds herself at the Midnight Library, she has a chance to make things right. The books in the Midnight Library enable Nora to live as if she had done things differently. Each one contains a different life, a possible world in which she made different choices that played out in an infinite number of ways, affecting everyone she knew as well as many people she never met. Like, this just sounds like I'm gonna cry. It really does. I haven't heard that anyone cried reading it, but I'm soft. So I might. We'll see, but I hope I love this book. I really do. Next up, we have another book that I have been wanting to read for a while, and that is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. I always heard that people loved this book. I hear it's very beautifully written. I hear it's very pretty writing. It's like that type of writing that's just 
beautiful to read. Even if you don't necessarily like what you're, you're reading, you like reading the writing, if that makes sense. That's the vibe I get from this book. Um, and I do know that it involves, obviously, a circus. But other than that, I don't really know. All I know is that this is a traveling circus that just appears. One day it's there, when the day before it was not, and I'm sure there's other things that happen, um, but I'm just gonna have to find that out as I read because this is definitely a book I want to go in blind because I feel like if I know too much, I probably won't pick it up as quickly. But I'm excited about this. I hope I love it. Next up, we have The Big Kahuna. Like, honestly, this book is one of the most intimidating books I've ever held in my hand. And that is The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. She thick, like she thick. And I don't have an issue with thick books, um, but my attention span does. And I'm, I'm really intimidated by how long this is because I hope that I, it can hold my attention. But with what I've heard about this book, I think I will. I love a nice epic fantasy. I live for it. I loved Game of Thrones. I did read at least the first book in Game of Thrones and that was fine. And you know, the Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings, that whole vibe is here for me. And this book kind of screams that it's going to be more up that alley. It has freaking dragons. That's dope. Like, I don't even care what else this book has. Just knowing that it has dragons is good enough for me. Um, but I have been wanting to read a book by Samantha Shannon. I have not yet, and I feel like this is going to be the one for me. I honestly feel like this could potentially be a five star just because I know myself and my epic fantasy love. So I'm really hoping that this goes well. I hope that there's a lot of epic world building. I hope that there's a lot of epic battle scenes. I hope that there are some awesome characters. I hope there's a lot of dragons. Um, so we'll see. I might do a reading vlog reading this, but I honestly don't know because it might be kind of long. But we'll see. Next up we have The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna. This is the book that was in the February Alcrate box. Um, and this is another book that I was really excited for this year. Um, and honestly, I still struggle with explaining this properly because I want to do it justice. It is about our main character who is anticipating the blood ceremony of her people. Um, and she's hoping that her blood runs red, but at the time of the blood ceremony, her blood actually runs gold, which is the color of impurity. And the consequences for that could be worse than death. Dope. Next up, we have The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw. This is a book about one of my favorite things, witches, and that's all I need to know. That's it. That's all I need to know. I might read this soon. I might save this for October, but honestly, who knows? I feel like witches, spooky things, horrors, thrillers, they're year-rounders for me. It doesn't have to be a certain time, so I'm anticipating picking this up kind of soon, and I'm excited. And the cover is stunning. The cover is so beautiful, like honestly, it could be awful and I feel like I would always keep this book just because I love the cover. But honestly, I hope it's good. I hope it's good. Next up, we're going to move into my mixed medium books that I have. So we have two graphic novels, one short story, and three mangas to go for. So I'm just going to start with the graphic novels. And that is Saga Volume 4. I've read the first three volumes of Saga already and I love it. This is a series that I am very, very much invested in and I am super happy to have the fourth one. Considering that it is a sci-fi based story, I'm surprised with how much I love it because I don't usually like sci-fi things and I don't know what it is. It's not that they're bad. It's just, it takes a while for me to get invested in it. But Saga Volume 1 hooked me from the first word bubble and it has just been a joy to read. So I'm very excited to read Volume 4. Then the other graphic novel that I got actually also just came in today. It came in the package with the Midnight Library, and that is Thangs by Sarah Anderson. And it's stunning. I, we love a hardcover graphic novel. It's got this texture to it, the black sprayed edges, and it just sounds so fun. And it, the art typically isn't something that I would gravitate towards, but it seems like such a fun ride. And honestly, the back synopsis is all you need to know that it's a love story between a vampire and a werewolf. Who would have thought, right? 
Um, and I actually just recently saw Chloe from Books with Chloe talk about this book. And as soon as I saw it, I knew that I also had to read it. And I'm super excited for this. I just feel like this is going to be such a joy to read. So next up, um, we do have a poems and short story book, which is Fierce Fairy Tales by Nikita Gill. This is a collection of short stories and poems, obviously, um, that take modern day fairy tales and kind of twist them. I know some of them have a more um, feminist vibe to them, kind of twisting them in a way that is more realistic to the women and showing just the deeper nature of things. And um, it just seems like an, an odd take. It seems like a really interesting way to um, describe some of these stories. And the back just says, Await no princess to save you through their lips touching yours, whilst you are in an unwilling slumber. Wake up each other instead. Nikita Gill said, Read this and stay woke. And I would like to. So. Then for my manga, I actually haven't gotten that many manga since the last time I updated you. I don't believe. But we do have volumes two and three of Waiting for Spring. Um, this is a series I just recently started and I am in love with it. I did already read volume two. I'm working my way to volume three. It is so cute. It's about basketball. I love basketball. I love anything involving basketball. It's It seems like, like I said in a previous video, one of my favorite Asian dramas is a Japanese drama called Buzzer Beat. It's about basketball. One of my favorite animes of all time is Kuroko's Basket. It's about basketball. And then here we have this manga waiting for spring and it is so so cute and then the last book that i have to talk to you about is one more manga it is a manga i just got i'd never heard of it before i saw it on the shelf but as soon as i saw it i knew that it was probably going to be for me and that is volume one of the witch and the beast and the cover the mystery the elegance the dark factor to it it just it just sounds like everything and the art in it is beautiful and it honestly looks pretty scary um, just because I feel like every time I flip through there's just something going on and it says a witch's curse Gido, a feral girl with long fangs and the eyes of a beast a shock a soft-spoken man with delicate features and a coffin strapped to his back this ominous pair appears one day in a town that's in a thrall that's in thrall to a witch who has convinced the townsfolk she's their hero but Gido and a shop know better they have st they have scores to settle and they won't hesitate to remove anyone in their way a dark stylish fairy tale for fans of xxx holic and noragami i've never read noragami but xxx holic was pretty good um so this just sounds interesting i'm not sure how many volumes there are like i said i literally had never heard of this before i i saw on the shelf um so hopefully it's good and i'm just really excited about it that is pretty much all of the books that I had to show you. So now, just like last time, what I'm gonna do is I am gonna quickly go ahead and pop them on my shelves and kind of show you guys the update of what they look like now, that they're almost full. I am almost in need of a third shelf and that's pretty wild considering I just started filling these shelves December and it's early March. So we'll see, I'll bear it back. Alrighty, so here we have it. I'm gonna scooch out of the way just a little bit. So, ta-da, they're nothing special at the moment, and to be completely honest with you, the organization system is not where it's going to stay once I actually get more books and build more shelves. I do plan on having it in alphabetical order and also by genre, but for now, I just don't have enough books to do that, and I just want them to look nice and organized. So we have like a, a random mix of thrillers and contemporary fantasy like there's really no organization up here at all i just wanted the height to not be obnoxious that's why all these tall books are off to the side because i just didn't want them in the middle and that is the only thing that this is organized by is how the heights look currently that's the only reason the thrillers are here and not somewhere in the middle of the shelf whereas i'd like to just continue the fantasy over this book just doesn't work. Maybe I'll swap these, but I kind of like this over here, so I'm not, it's not that deep. 
It's not that deep right now. I'm just happy that I'm building my shelves and I'm really excited to continue. So that pretty much does it for today's video. Thank you for watching. I really hope you liked it. If you did like this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up down below to support this channel. And if you'd like to follow me on my reading journey and continue seeing me build my shelves, please hit that subscribe button and follow me along. I'm really excited for this channel. I have a lot of awesome plans and I really hope you'll follow along with me. Now, that's all I have for you. Once again, I really hope you like this video and I will see you in the next one.